I'm Chaz Hogan, Australian journalist here at Anfield ahead of the Europa League semi-final second leg between Liverpool and Barla Town. Now the English side hold a 4-2 lead after the first leg and although Barla manager Ozzy Villan insists there is a chance for his side to turn things around, this journalist spent a night at the White Lion pub with Ozzy and was told off the record that there's actually a snowball's chance in hell of that happening. Oh wait, I shouldn't have said that. Is this live? Hi guys, I'm Ozzy Villa and welcome to Season 14, Episode 19 of The Impossible Dream with Barla Town. And today we face the small task of going to Anfield and needing to overturn a 4-2 deficit from the first leg of the Europa League semi-final. Um, so, it's not going to be the easiest thing we have to do. Uh, in the uh, highly likely event that we uh, don't manage to do that, there will also be our end of season awards and our goal of the season competition as well today. Um, and if there isn't, then there'll just be probably 15 minutes at the end of just me wildly celebrating the impossible. Uh, let's have a quick look at what we're up against here, though. We saw Liverpool a couple of episodes ago. Uh, we're 3-1 to one outsiders, which isn't the worst, but... Um, yeah, it's not going to happen. We've played them five times. We've never beaten them. We've never really got close to them, I don't think. Uh, we saw all about them an episode or so ago. Frank De Boer is still their manager. Um, adventurous passing playing style. They're currently sitting fourth in the Premier League. They are still battling to try and get back. I'm assuming they're in the Champions League this year. Uh, but they're trying to get back there. Looks like it's between them and Spurs. Um... I haven't really checked the Premier League in a little while. No real surprise team there. Good to see Villa still kicking around. Uh, Reading, although they've gone down, maybe is the only surprise team. But 14 seasons in, there's usually one or two, isn't there, that are real sort of bolters from the blue. But there's no one there that sort of stands out as, uh, as shocking. Anyway, let's have a look here. They did lose last time out to Newcastle, so let's hope that's a... That's a sign of things to come, although 3-1 would not be enough, would it? We'd be agonizingly be a goal away if that was the scoreline. Uh, we, this is what we're expecting from them, same as we saw from them in the first leg. Um, we can see their heat map there, uh, as well as their passing network, and their key passes as well. And this is the team that we are sending out. Uh, we're basically going with the same team that uh, that got us to the to, uh, back into the game in that first leg. So it's stealing goal. It's Lafuente, Susnick, Tony, and Noster as the back four. Bruton's going to sit in there as an anchor man for us, try and protect the back two. Uh, Arias and Correa, they're going to be in midfield. Correa, of course, is the, one of the young midfielders that we've signed. Um, very, very high potential player, so hopefully he'll have a good game for us. Fermin and Holick are going to go as the inside forwards. Holick He's left footer, so an inside forward might suit him. He's a wonder kid. We've got to get him in the team somewhere. Freshie gets the start just ahead of Big Mac. Um, we're going with a high line. I'm wondering if we should be narrow. Try and make him go down the outside of us. Let's go with that. They're a passing team after all. Uh, we're going to... Uh, we'll counter... No, we'll just regroup. We've just got to try and hold them, don't we? We're going to pass into space. Uh, we're going to try and get it forward. I wonder... If, uh, I don't know how to, I don't know what to do, but anyway, so let's try that, we'll lower the tempo down, we're going to play for set pieces, we are a dangerous team from a set piece, so this is what we're doing, let's hope it works. So, it looks very similar to the first uh, leg, doesn't it, Alexander Arnold's still there, Fatih is still there, this guy's got a couple of goals for him, I, th I think, I've noticed his name popping up from time to time, um, an elite striker, we don't I tell you what, I'd almost take Freshie over this guy. So, I mean, we have some good players. I, I do keep underestimating exactly how good we could be. Um, Gomez says, go out there, prove a point. Uh, let's go, a little bit of passion. We've got nothing to lose here, or do we want to go for revenge? Let's go for revenge, boys. Come on. Some calm, we have faith, and let's hope we have, uh, let's hope we're a vengeful team. All right, and here we go. Anfeld, European Knights. What could possibly go wrong? That's <laughs> the away team. All right, promising start. Look at that. We're dominating possession. And that's gone. <laughs> um, we we need to score first. That goes without saying. 3-0 would get it there for us. Ideally, we, I mean, realistically, we are going to need to score the four um, to cancel out their away goals. Lafuente has it. That's a worry. He gets back to Susnik, to Correa. Correa to Brewerton, to Arias. Here we go it, with Fermin. We've got Lafuente on the overlap. Fermin runs in field though. Can he slip a pass in for Holick? He goes for it. Holick's there. Holick's there. Oh. You get the feeling that had to go in the back of the net. But that was promising from us. That looked, that looked quite dangerous. More of that, please, boys. More of that. Oh, you get... I mean, I know all teams miss chances. But you do wonder if, uh, if that had gone in. And we missed a couple in the first leg, I think, too, didn't we? Oh, that's poor defending. Off the post. Lafuente's there to clear. 
Oh, I've hit pause instead of shout. Let's push forward, boys. Come on. We need to get this goal. Can we get something before the break? One goal in the first half, two in the second half. That works for us, doesn't it? Let's get this away. Please, boys. It's offside, Ralph. It's something. It's nothing. It's a goal is what it is. And we're 1-0 down. And now we do need the four goals. Three goals will no longer be enough. Show some passion, boys. And of all the ways to concede, and it's Susnik at the back post. Well, it was the near post. It became the back post. And let's not let's not fall in a heap. We've seen this from us before. We, we have a nasty habit of conceding one and then following it up with a second goal conceded very quickly. And I go back to that holic chance. If that had gone in, we're 1-0 up, tails up. That could have that could have changed things, but realistically, it's it was always going to be tough, wasn't it? What we don't want to do is fall in a heap, as I said. Can we win this back, please, boys? For means working hard, ball forward. Uh, it's not the best. Fatih's in, and a big save from Thiel. And I'm wondering if we just do this. We have to try and win it back, don't we? So we'll go and have a crack at that. We've already got two players on booking, so we're obviously a big risk of going down to 10 men. I don't usually like playing with get stuck in on. That's over the bar as well. Uh, I just feel like it just means you miss tackles. You give away free kicks, and ultimately players get sent off. But we'll see what happens. We've got really nothing to lose. Steel goes short for Susnik. Susnik to Tony, one of the players on a booking. Some nice little play there through midfield. Here we go with Coria. He spreads it out looking for Fomine, and, well, we'll never know what happened there. Pollock only playing a 6.2. Um, remind them the pressure's off. I'm we've 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 got nothing to lose, do we? That was absolutely terrible, boys. Three of our back four are on bookings. I'm thinking it's probably not a good idea to leave get stuck in on, is it? Um Yeah, I don't, I don't foresee that particularly ending well. What can we do with Holick? Um, let's, I do like a Roman tour, so let's try that. I don't, I just, I don't see getting stuck in on. I don't see that ending well for us. We'll give it a little bit of time, see how they react to the telling off at half time. We'll demand more. Freshie's looking anxious. Freshie has not shown up against Liverpool, has he? We've now got four of our defensive five on bookings. And, well, I'm going to call this on a few players, I think, because it's not working. Um, all right, so we are going to... We're going to get desperate. We're going to go two up top. Um, you know what we're going to do, actually? This is what we're going to do. We're going to do this. We're going to move Holick out. Um, we're going to move Brewerton forward. Okay, we're going to go with Pukland out there. Uh, as a winger, please. Yep, we're going to move Freshy back into the middle. Um, I want Coria. I still want you as a Mazella, please. And... No, we probably want you as inside forwards, don't we? Because we're going to get the wingbacks bombing forward. If you watch the Brentford series, you may recognise this. <laughs> um... I mean, we, we need goals. If we can see, if you know, if we go if we go out, we go out. La Fuente's having a bad day. We're getting to the point now where we're going to make our three subs. I think. Well, we've got one sub left. I two subs left. Sorry, don't we? We've already taken Holick off. Can we get a foot in here, please? Not no such luck as of yet. Can we get? Oh, it's uh, he's offside. He's offside, Raf. He's offside. Theo saves it anyway. But it looks like it was indeed offside. All right. Um. Norrington Davies, it's probably your last appearance. Let's get you on. Freshy, you've not, you've not worked, mate. You've not worked, so off you go. And Coria has had a bad day, so that will be it for you. And Rhoda will come on for him. Although Nostal's not having a particularly good game either. And he's on a booking. So we, Oh, no, we've made our subs, so never mind. Come on, boys. Let's get creative. Let's at least try and get a point on the night. If we, It looks as though it's going to end here for us, but... Well, it's, I mean, it's been a fantastic campaign to get to the semi-finals and go out to Liverpool, who will ultimately go on and win it, I would imagine. No stop. Ball back in there for Arias. Is he going to get there? He's too slow. Arias, mate, come on. 
Oh. I thought we were going to have a highlight. And instead, we've gone 2-0 down. Let's give it a concentrate. Oh, he, he stopped. He hesitated. You've... I'm getting... I'm just frustrated. It's fine, Arias. You've had a good year. Theo couldn't keep it out. And, I mean, it was never like... Nostas having a nightmare. It's... I mean, it's... To be honest, I mean, 2-0 at Anfield. I mean, there'll be better teams than us lose by more than that, won't there? Fomin has a chance here. Can Fomin get himself another European goal? It's tackled away. Norrington Davies is there. Four back post. No one's there. Correa. Pukland. It's a bit of head tennis. It's still there. Norrington Davies back in. It's cleared away. And we're probably going to hit on the break now, aren't we? Because that seems to be what's happening to us. Susnick's going across. Player cuts in. Thiel makes a cracking save. And they're just kind of picking us off right now, aren't they? Alexander-Arnold, decent ball in. I mean, we know he's a good free kick taker, but that looked quite spectacular, didn't it? Um, let's pass into space. Let's just get the ball into the box. Why not go more direct? We've got Big Mac up there, don't we? But, uh, yeah, there we go. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, if there's anything more we could have done. It was We lost it in the first leg, didn't we? I mean, you can't afford to concede four away goals and expect to go through against anybody really but it's particularly against Liverpool Firmin's done well there Firmin goes down it's going to be a penalty and we just might get a goal back here you know who's going to take it who's going to take it um, Firmin oh, it's, oh that's surely it was a penalty was it not Arias takes a free kick it's a good header from Nosta straight at the goalkeeper though and let's give them a calm down. It's been a fantastic European campaign. It's a shame it's ended like this. But, yeah, I mean, it was always going to be tough. It's it's always a shame to get so close. Um, it really wasn't a good performance from us, though, boys. So there we go. First leg triumph helps Liverpool pass Barla Town. I don't know if there's too much more we could have done, I'll be honest. Uh, we've got 2.6 million more in the bank. Uh, we'll have a quick look at finances, and that's all looking uh, fairly healthy, isn't it? Uh, we've made a loss this season, but we've also signed a fair few players this season. If we go and have a look at the transfers, um, we spent $35 million. We only got $9 million back, so that basically accounts for the loss. And we've got probably a little bit more Champions League money to come yet as well. So that's, um, that's I think, an acceptable loss to make. If we have a quick look at the European coefficients... Uh, now that we're done for the year, Wales, we have, I mean, we've had a really good year with Wales. We've got 33 points, so we're going to go up two more spots. Is anybody going to overtake us? No. So we're going up two more spots. We're going to be 13th. Unlucky, or are we going to be 12th? No, we're going to be 13th. Um, hopefully, next season, what are we defending next season? Five points. So we've done well, better than that in every sub subsequent season. So hopefully, um, Kef and Druids will go, will go well in Europe, and we just might find ourselves going above the likes of uh, Belgium and Turkey, and we'll be getting to the point where we, we, and even Russia's not that far ahead of us, we'll be starting to get to the point where we just might be able to get ourselves, even Austria is going to be very gettable in the next few seasons, so Portugal as well, although they've had a better year this year, um, you know, we'll be getting to where we might automatically qualify for the group stages, if you have a look at us as a club, uh, the coefficients, um, where are we here, we've got 19 coefficient points this year, 79 total, uh, so we are going to as not as anybody immediately behind is going to overtake us. We're not going to quite get Rangers, but we are going to overtake AC Milan, Porto, Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, and we're going to go just ahead of Lille as well. So we're going to go inside the top 20, it looks like. That is, that is obscene. Anyway, guys, that is it for what has been a fairly decent season, I would say. Um... Disappointing to lose the Welsh Cup final. Disappointing to not be able to overcome Liverpool. If we want to have a look at who the final is going to be between, um, there's probably a better way to do that, isn't there, than click back through everything. Um, Europa League, it is going to be, it's it's Roma versus Liverpool in the final. Roma got past Milan on penalties. So, let's say Liverpool wins that, and I think we could justifiably claim we were the second best team in this competition. And look at Fumin, top goal scorer, having only come into the competition in the knockout rounds. Wonderful effort from him. Anyway, guys, that's it for the season. We'll be right back after the break for the end of season awards. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Barla Town end of season awards. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Wow, thank you. You're too kind. Far too kind. 
thank you so much. And well, welcome to the end of season awards. It's the end of a season that... It's a disappointing end to a good season, really, isn't it? I mean, the Welsh Cup final, less said about that, the better. Um, and I tell you what, Anfield's a tough place to go, isn't it? And uh, I thought we did okay in the end against what is a very, very good Liverpool side. So a good season by the team. It's the furthest we've got in Europe in our history, of course, getting to a semi-final. So well done to the boys. Let's give them all a big round of applause and thank them for their efforts. You've done well, boys. You really have. So the first award this evening is the Golden Pen, awarded to the player who was the best signing this season. And this guy, he came in, he's a youngster, and I tell you what, he ended the season, I think, almost first choice in midfield. He cost us £5 million from Benfica. The winner is... Louis Correa. The next award is the Golden Card, awarded to the player this season with the worst disciplined... And this guy, well, he's a new boy to the team, and, well, he's obviously acquitted himself quite well uh, and shown that he's not afraid of a yellow card. With five of them, enough to win the award this season. He's a right-back for the Wags. He is... Iron Iwan. The next award is the Golden Bullseye, awarded to the player with the best pass completion. And, well, this guy is leaving us in the summer, and it is the last time he will get to win this award. He's won it, I think, every season since he's been here, with a 95% pass completion rate. The winner is... Madeleine Teniskovic. The next award is the Golden Spoon, awarded to the man who feeds the strikers, the man with the most assists... And this season, well, this guy, he, he really did stand up. He made himself counted, and he is looking to be a wonderful, wonderful player for both club and country now, I would say. Uh, with 12 assists, the man with the golden spoon is... Danny Gami. The next award is the Golden Anchor, awarded to the man that we can rely on, the player with the highest average match rating... And, well, the winner this year, it's good to have him back. It really, really is. He's gone missing for a few seasons, but he's back this year with an average match rating of 8.03. That is stunning. The winner is... Damien Omar. The next award is the Golden Soother, awarded to the baby of the team, this season's best young player. And this guy's another one that has stepped up. He's an important player for both club and country at this point in his career, which is excellent to see. He's come through our academy. He's a star of the future. He is Ken Bookley. Well, now it's time for one of the big ones. It is the Golden Boot awarded to this season's top goal scorer. And the last few seasons, this has been the Marcus Wade Award. Well, he has moved on, and, well, the Golden Boot has gone back to its ancestral home. With 25 goals, the Golden Boot goes to... He's back! He's Damien Omar! The next award is one that means a lot to the players. It is the Viewers Player of the Year, as voted by you watching at home on YouTube. And we had four very good nominees, and I think everybody for their nominations, and also those who voted... But with 50% of the vote, the viewer's player of the year for this season is... Get back up here, Damien Omar. Okay, and now we're almost at the end of the evening where we announce the player of the year. But before that, we do need to acknowledge this season's team of the year. If you just direct your eyes up to the board, you will see that the goalkeeper is Thiel. The back four, La Fuente, well, how'd you get in there? Along with Ben Evans, Gurke and Nosta. The midfield duo are Correa and Bukli. Your number 10 is the Golden Spoon winning Danny Gami. Your wingers are Fomine and Puklin. And the striker is, of course, the Golden Boot winner, Damien Ormark. Congratulations, guys. You've all had wonderful seasons. And now it is time for the big one to award the Golden Star for this season's Man of the Town, Barla Town's Player of the Season. And, well, there was a number of good players for us. A fantastic run in Europe. Um, so, you know, we've had a lot of good, strong performances from a lot of good players. But there's one man that stood above the rest. With 78% of the vote, the Golden Star goes back again to its ancestral home. That is Damien Omar. So 
So there we go. Congratulations to Damien and the rest of the winners. It's been a wonderful night. It's been a wonderful season. And I cannot wait to do it all again at my 15th attempt at this club. We will, at one point, hopefully, win a European trophy. We got oh so close this year. Next season, we strengthen. We go again and see if we can get even closer. So thank you, everybody, for coming out in the auditorium tonight. Thank you for you watching at home. I look forward to seeing you all again next season. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. So there we go, end of season awards are done for another year and Damien Ormark, the King of Wales, has returned and he returned in style, 78% of the vote he got for the player of the year. Coria and KDH were there, but were they really there? It was a non-contest, really, wasn't it? Uh, Matteo Freshi's goal of the season, we'll come back to that in just a second. Uh, Coria was the signing of the year, and I think that's just about fair enough. I don't think Holick probably didn't quite do enough um, from when he came in. Kenny Bookley is the player of the year. If we look at team of the year, we know that it does tend to go off of uh, the league as much as anything else. Um... I do have a problem with La Fuente, but I guess if you, I mean, he probably didn't do too bad. 6.44 in Europe. He wasn't good enough in Europe, but domestically, obviously, he's he's decent enough. But we need to find ourselves a proper left back to play in Europe next season, don't we? Um, otherwise, though, I'm relatively happy with that team of the season. Uh, goal scorer was Ormark. The average rating, I'm not quite sure why it didn't give it to anybody, but Ormark had the highest average rating, so he won that award. Denigami, most assists. Uh, uh, Tanis Kovic with the best pass completion. He will be leaving. His contract is up. We won't be renewing it. Um, so at least he goes out with the Golden Bullseye one last time. Damien Ormark, most man of the match. Not an award we give out on the evening, but um, obviously he was quite good for us in the league. Ballerini and Idon Iwan were the two for gold, golden card, but obviously at lesser appearances from Iwan, he gets the award. He's, I mean, he was just the wags like right back, to be honest. Um, and apparently he loved the booking as well. So uh, well done to him. Where do you get all these bookings in the Walsh League Cup? Um, so yeah, he won the Golden Boot, so at least he'll be remembered for something when his career comes to the inevitable end as soon as we get a better right back at the club. <laughs> That's why he's qualified. Uh, season in review. Well, knocked out the group stages in the Champions League. It was a tough group, but we didn't quite get there. Semi-finals of the Europa League, as we've just seen. We won the League. We won the League Cup. We won't talk about the Welsh Cup final and the Iron Brew. That can go away as well. Uh, match of the season, the 6-0 demolition of Aberthwith Town. But they got theirs back, didn't they? And the moment to forget, there was a few of those. We lost more games this season. I think we've lost in a very long time. Um, but yeah, the 3-0 at home to the New Saints, was not. Uh, that was not one that lives uh, long in the memory. Uh, look at that average attendance. We're up to 17% full now. Oh, if we could just play for another... Another, what, 50 seasons, we might be able to get that new stadium. Uh, and we had 46 players used. We shouldn't even have 46 players in the squad. Never mind that many players used. But it was the Aussie Villain Award, and I did win it again this season. The side of 2021, this is all the way back to, almost to when we started. Um, if you want to have a quick look, I'll leave that there. Um, Club Vision, well, we'll just accept it because it's just basically win, isn't it? We can't really have much say about that. We'll do everything else here off camera. Um... And one other thing I did want to show you quickly, if we go and have a look at general information, we have a new club legend, and that man is, of course, Damien Ormark. It took long enough for him to get there. Um, he scored over 200 goals, 259 league games, 223 league goals, 57 Men of the Match awards, and he has finally, this season, become a club legend. So well done, Damien Ormark. That is more than deserved. Uh, so we have a quick look here at how the squad did this year. We have, we'll start with appearances, and we can see, I mean, we we spread them out relatively evenly. Thiel was the most uh, appearance maker. Um, Parry, the left back, surprisingly enough, was, uh, was second up there. He's going to have to hopefully not step up next year, but... Um, yeah, continue the kick on for us. And if we go all the way down to players who didn't really play, uh, they're mostly just youngsters. Most of these guys will look to... Obviously, uh, Gareth will stay until he retires. Um... But most of these guys are either young or new to the team. Ewan Davis wants, uh, Ewan Dixon, sorry, wants to leave as well. So we might, uh, we might look to move him on. Um, but that is that. If we look at goals, we know that Ormark was the golden boot getter. Uh, behind him, uh, Fomin, who only seemed to score in the Europa League, and Freshy, who only seemed to score in the Champions League. Uh, Puklin, uh, James Lewis, Riera, Riola, sorry, Big Mac. Not a great season from Big Mac, was it? Um, but we can see sort of everybody else that got the goals there. Assists, Denigami led the way. Ballerini, Coria had a good season. 
Uh, Arias, Parry as well, Puklin, Fomin, Allmark up there as well. And the average rating, as we we know that it was Allmark top. Sean Davis didn't play much this year due to injury, um, but had a good year when he did play. Uh, we can see everybody else going down there. Um, pretty much everybody played above a seven, which is superb. Um, just goalkeepers, really, isn't it? And players who didn't play that much. Tommy Williamson was disappointing. I'm hoping if he doesn't uh, come back to us this summer, um, then we might need to look to just cash in on him and sell him on. But uh, he's not on massive wages, and I do like him. So hopefully he will regain our trust this summer. But guys, that is it. We've just got the goal of the season. Now, if you have enjoyed this season, please do hit thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. But it is now time for goal of the season. Now, the way this works is that the Freshie goal and three others I deem worthy of goal of the season. You'll be able to vote on those. There'll be a link at the top of the description, just like um, voting for player of the year. Uh, so click on that and vote for your favorite goal when you see the uh, the highlights here. But before that, we'll have a look back at some of the honorable mentions as well. It's been a good season. I've enjoyed this season. We'll be back next time. Um, I think the plan here is we'll have a Wales episode because we have World Cup qualifiers against Italy and Iceland coming up. Uh, and then we will have the summer transfer special. Um, so that's the plan. Hopefully we won't have to miss a day in between. I should be able to get the Wales episode out and not have to miss a day. Uh, but until then, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit thumbs up. I've been Aussie Villain, and I'll see you next time around for some World Cup qualifying. Enjoy goals of the season. Take care. Here are our top four goals from the 32-33 season. Don't forget to vote for your favorite.